Good morning. Uh, today we're going to be talking about doubling using arrays. So you guys can see already that this is a two by six array. There's two rows <clears throat> and six up and down, six columns, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we know that two times six equals 12. So six plus six equals 12. If we move to the next slide, you know that this is doubled, right? So this was the two times six, which is 12. And here's another two times six. Two plus two is four. So we can split the four up into two and two and do two times six twice. So this is our four. And we have 12 here and we have 12 here. 12 plus 12 equals 24. What we're doing here is called the distributive property of multiplication. You can take one of the factors and split it up into, um, <clears throat> into its parts. So you have to, all the parts have to add up to this factor here, and two plus two equals four. We'll do it again on the next slide. So this time we have eight times six, which might sound scary to some of you, but if you think about it, we have two times six, and two times six, and another two times six, and another two times six. Two plus two plus two plus two equals eight, and each one of these is 12, plus 12, 12, so you can really see when you're multiplying, when you're on these using an array, you can see how many, um, how many squares you have. So 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 is 24 plus 24. And that equals four plus four is eight and two plus two is four. So Eight times six is 48. And I used to always say six times eight is 48. Six times eight is 48. And that's how I would remember it. Now we're going to talk about three times six. And you can see already that we're still using the two times six, which is 12. And this time we're just adding one more because three, two plus one is three. And one times six is six. One group of six is one, two, three, four, five, six squares. And we add those together and we end up with, ooh, that's a terrible eight, 18. I'm gonna put it up here, 18. Now let's see, what will happen if we doubled this? So instead of this being a three, we had six. If we did that, we could add another row here and turn, let's change this to, we're going to erase this and this. And now we're going to pretend that we're multiplying 6 times 6. So this time we're going to split this. We can, why don't we split this up into a group of 3. Two groups of 3 times 6. So in that case, you'd go one, two, three more rows, go across, go up. So now we have two groups of three times six, which we know is 18, 18. And then we're gonna add these together. Eight plus eight is 16. We're gonna take the one and add the extra 10 and the 16. So then we have 36. So 36 squares. 6 times 6 is double 18, or 2 times 18, 36. The distributive property is really, really, really cool. Now, let's instead of having 6, we're going to have 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 2 here. And we know that seven plus seven equals 14. So seven plus seven and two times seven equal the same amount. The, the product is 14 and the sum is 14. Now we'll double that. So two times 
times seven plus two more sevens. Here are your four, this four, and this is our seven. So we know that 14, two times seven is 14, and 14 plus 14 is 28. So four times seven is 28. And on to doubling that. So again, we have seven. Here's our eight, two, four, six, eight. Distributive property of multiplication. We split up this factor, eight, into groups of two because that's easier to do. We know that two times seven is 14. And again, we're just gonna add each smaller array together to figure out what the big array is. I'm gonna do that over here. We figured this out, two times 14 is 28. 28 plus 28. Eight plus eight is 16. I'm putting the one up here because 16 is six ones and one 10. This is our tens column, so I'm adding it here. One plus two is three, Th three plus two is five. So eight times seven is 56. You can split up one factor, but you cannot split up more than one factor. If you split up more than one factor, then it will get all messed up. Let's see. So now we're gonna look at three times seven. We already figured out two times seven. Do you remember what it is? Yep, that was 14. Here's one row of seven. So three times seven is the same as two times seven. plus one times seven. One group of seven is seven. Two groups of seven is 14. And all together, let's see, seven plus four is 11. So we keep one in the one column, add another 10 to the tens column, 21. So if you spent some time counting all the little squares, you should end up with 21. All right, and that is it for our lesson. So let's go over how to do our, um, our work today. So find the number of squares in each array. You may use any strategy that works for you. Use numbers, sketches, or words to explain how you found the number of squares. If it helps, you can draw on the array. The example may help. So here's our example. How many squares are in the array below? In this case, they counted one, two, three, four, five, six. Six plus six plus six equals 18. And they circled the right number. The challenge, write at least one equation that describes the array. So we're focusing on multiplication. If you don't know multiplication, you could use addition too. In this case, we have six three groups of six or six groups of three. So six times three equals 18. You're going to do that in number one. How many squares are there in the array? Just like they did here in this example. You'll do that again on number two. Same thing, write at least one equation and then complete these problems below. So remember that whenever you see a problem, especially written out like this one, um, this sometimes confuses people, but remember that this answer, the answer to this has to be the same as the answer to this. The answer to this is the same as the answer to this. This is like um, a scale right, a balance, and both have to be the same number. You don't have to get to it the same way, but they both have to have the same answer. So in the end, so this one, 
This has to equal 21. 7 times something has to equal 35. 5 times 10 has to equal something times 2. Okay, so that's our assignment for today. Um, hope you enjoyed that lesson. Awesome.